Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about books that have representation of disfigurement and disability. It's a video that you've been asking me to make for ages and I've been meaning to make for ages but I've always thought, oh I'll get to these ones on my TBR first, then I'll make that video. And that's just something that perpetuates, so I've decided no, now is the time. I've pulled all of the books off my shelves that I can remember have representation of disfigurement and disability and they're all littered around me and I'm going to talk you through them. What I got on with, what I didn't get on with and also what I'm planning to read at some point in the future. If you're new here my name is Jen, hi I am a writer, I also have a disfigurement myself, I have a condition called EEC syndrome, that means a variety of things, I've spoken about it in other videos which I'll link in the description box, I have syndactyly, ectrodactyly, I have issues with my eyes, I may lose my sight, I have alopecia, lots of very exciting things I've spoken about in other videos. I also have a series on this channel where I talk about the representation of disfigurement in the media so I'll also link that in the description box because those videos feed into everything I'm going to be talking about today. Before I get onto the books there are, are as I said littered around me I've made a list of some books that I don't have physical copies of so I'm going to speak about those first because otherwise I will forget to do so. So firstly I'm not going to be talking about things like The Witches by Roald Dahl and Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I have a whole video where I've spoken about Peter Pan which I'll link down below and The Witches um, and say Victorian novels where a character has a disfigurement for a specific reason so to represent evil is not something I'm going to be talking about here because I've made a whole video talking about the use of disfigurement as a representation of villainy so you can go and check out that video to find out more on that front. In that video I also talk about bodily difference in Harry Potter if that's of interest and speaking of Harry Potter I'll quickly mention the Cormoran Strike books which are also by JK Rowling. Those are a series of detective novels the first one being The Cuckoo's Calling and they are about a detective called Cormoran Strike and he is an amputee. The way I think about Cormoran is that he's basically as I've said before on this channel Muggle, Mad Eye, Moody. Constant vigilance and all of that. The books, they are flawed but I do enjoy reading them. I don't have copies because I listen to them on audio and the representation of disfigurement I think is is done, it's okay in those books. So I just wanted to briefly mention that here because I think in the comments section I'm sure a lot of people would recommend those books to me if I didn't mention them here. Uh, let's see, I'm also not going to talk about fairy tales. Um, disability and disfigurement creep up in fairy tales quite a lot but I have a whole series where I talk about the history of fairy tales so I'm going to link that in the description box down below. I'm not going to talk about minor characters in Victorian literature such as Tiny Tim who are used um, as like martyr figures um, or victims of people who have disabilities or disfigurements. Victorian literature isn't my strong point but I will link in the description box a video that Katie did over at Books and Things where she was talking about disfigurement and disability in Victorian literature because she knows her classics. Okay, so books that I don't have copies of right now, The Christmas Saurus by Tom Fletcher. This is one that I listen to. It's about a young boy called William who is a wheelchair user. It's a Christmas story and he um, gets to encounter a dinosaur at Christmas. I thought it was charming. It's middle grade. I have gifted it to a few people at Christmas and the representation of William's disability is, it is great. But what I will say is that in the book, the villain in the book has a scar that's described in um, in such a way as to be a representation of his villainy and I was sad that that was a trope that that book used. Um, so I do recommend The Christmas Christmasaurus but I do always flag that. Um, Wonder by RJ Palacio. Um, <laughs> Wonder is a book that I think has excellent intentions and it's one of those books about disfigurement. It's about a boy called Augie who has a facial disfigurement um, and he just wants to be accepted like everybody else and he starts school for the first time. He's up to that point being homeschooled and it's about people's reaction to him. Um, as I said it has really good intentions but I find for me it's one of those books that is for people who are able-bodied, for people who don't have disfigurements um, so that they can learn about disfigurement and feel good about themselves when they read it because they're empathising with somebody else. There is absolutely a place for those books. Um, I just think it's a shame that in in literature as a whole I feel that a lot of books where disfigurement or disability is a key theme, they are for people who don't have those things um, and it, 
a lot of um, tropes surrounding disability and disfigurement are either the, the villain trope that I've spoken about before or the um, inspiration porn, as we like to call it. Um, so yes, Wonder I found a little bit patronising. It's difficult to talk about because as I said I think it comes from a very good place and what I do love about Wonder is all of the good work that's been done after the publication of that book both by the author and also by organisations such as Changing Faces UK to raise awareness of disfigurement. I think that it sparked a huge movement and great discussions um, but if we're talking about the book itself it isn't one of my favourites. The Lunar Chronicles, specifically Cinder by Marissa Mayer, is a book that's recommended to me a lot because it's a fairy tale retelling of Cinderella where Cinderella is an android so she's part human, part robot. I thought it was fun when I read it a long time ago but not one of my favourites. I'm also recommended Geek Love a lot but that is a book I find deeply uncomfortable and I've never been able to get on board with it so I'm not going to be talking about that one today. So let's move on to the books that are surrounding me. For clarity I'm going to be focusing on physical disabilities and disfigurements. Disability is a huge term, we could talk about learning difficulties, we could talk about mental health but I'm going to be focusing on those two things today, physical disabilities and disfigurements because otherwise We'd be here for a very long time, but also made other videos where I've spoken about books that deal with mental health as well. Let's start with this book here, which is Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick. It's middle grade, it's part graphic novel, part novel. It is um, two narratives that are set 50 years apart. We've got Rose, who lives in the 1920s and she is deaf. We've got Ben, who lives in the 1970s. He's deaf in one ear, but then he suffers an accident and he is um, temporarily deaf in both ears. Rose loves going to the cinema because she loves to go and see silent films but then she sees that her local cinema is having sound installed and they're going to show talkies and she's not going to be able to enjoy going to the cinema anymore. She's looking for her mother, Ben is looking for his father and I'm not going to say more than that but I think that it's absolutely wonderful and I love that Rose's part of the story is told in drawings um, to reflect how she sees the world around her. The film of this is also wonderful as well. I'm just picking these books up in random order by the way. So next we have The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. This is literary fiction for grown-ups about a 15 year old girl called Miriam who collapses at school, is rushed to hospital, her heart has stopped beating but the doctors manage to revive her. It's then about her and her family, specifically her father Adam, how they cope with this new situation, this uncertainty because they're not given any answers um, and they're not sure Sure if this is going to happen to her again. Next we have a non-fiction book. This is Notes on Blindness by John M. Hull. This is his diary that's been published. He wrote about losing his sight. Because it's a diary it's not the most perfect of books because really he wrote this for himself. Um, it also has quite a lot of religious imagery in here as well which I find quite jarring but I know that some other people won't. Um, I found it fascinating to read about the practicalities of losing your sight, specifically how um, John felt more secure in himself when he was walking to a place that he knew on his own because he could listen to his surroundings to work out where he was but often sighted people would come up to him and try and offer advice or help and say could they help him get somewhere and he felt as though he had to say yes all the time. and when they started talking to him he felt vulnerable because he was engaging in conversation and could therefore not pay attention to the sounds around him anymore and therefore he would lose track of where he was so he was stronger on his own even though other people wanted to help. I learned a lot from this book. It's not the most perfect of books as I said because it's a diary but I did find it very interesting. A book that I actually have put down and I'm not sure I'll read again but it's just because of the writing style. It is The Good People by Hannah Kent. Hannah Kent and I we just don't seem to get on massively. I didn't love burial rites even though I know lots of people adore it. Um, this is a historical fiction and it looks at the way that people treated those with disabilities in the 1800s and before that thinking that they were changelings, that a fairy had stolen their actual baby and left a fairy child in their child's place. Horrible things were done to children in the name of changelings and I would like to read more non-fiction books I think on this topic but I'm mentioning this book here because I know loads of people love Hannah Kent so if this sounds like a topic that you would be interested in reading specifically if you enjoyed Burial Rights too, then maybe consider picking this one up. I'll link it below with everything else if you would like to go and find out more. Next up we have The Heart by Melita Carangel. It's published as Men the Living in the UK. This is the US edition. It's French and it's translated into English by Sam Taylor. It's about a young boy who dies in a 
the car crash and then it's about his heart transplant. So it isn't specifically about one illness or disability but it does deal with the way that organ transplantation works and I found that very very interesting. Um, this won the Welcome Prize in the UK and the Welcome Prize is a great prize and resource for finding out about books that in some way talk about medicine. Um, I spend a lot of time myself at the Welcome Library in London and I've read lots of different articles and parts of books on topics discussing medicine, disability, disfigurement, so I'll link them in the description box down below too. Next we've got a book called Liminal by B. Lewis. I actually didn't enjoy this book, but not because of the representation of disfigurement, so I'm still gonna talk about it in case you like the sound of it and you want to pick it up. So this is about a woman called Esther and her husband who moved to the countryside in Scotland to start a new life. Esther is an amputee. She lost a leg in a car accident. The representation in this I found, I. I found fine. It was just there was a moment that I found jarring when we discovered that Esther had an accident when she was eight. Um, it seemed newer than that for the characters, the way that they discussed it and the way that they approached things. So I didn't find that entirely believable, that time frame. Um, this book is about manipulation and her husband having secrets. It's quite spooky. At one point, Esther's listening to the radio and a, a, a story is being read on the radio and she's in it and her husband is in it too. It is creepy but it just overall didn't work for me um, and I'll link my review of it in the description box down below but as I said I still wanted to mention it here. Um, as well as actual like, representation, realistic representation of disability and disfigurement there's also of course magical realism as well. So I wanted to mention Knights of the Circus by Angela Carter and um, this is one that I read a very very long time ago and want to revisit. I think I read it about 15 years ago but this is about Feathers who is a circus performer and she has wings growing out of her back or does she? People are all desperate to find out if this is actually a physical difference that she has or whether she is conning people and um, has an interesting commentary on the history of the freak show. Next we've got this poetry pamphlet by Hannah Hogson. Hannah has a YouTube channel which I'll link down below. This is a collection of poetry um, exploring physical differences and the first one links uh, disability with fairy tales and it's called invisible. It begins, watch Rapunzel as she can't get to the top of the tower because there is no lift. Or Cinderella who can't get to the ball because there are no accessible pumpkins available. Watch Jack as he learns to drive with a brain injury after he tumbles down the hill with his water. And at the end it says, so many stories ignored because they are not beautiful. Speaking of poetry, an anthology that I would recommend is this one here called Stairs and Whispers, Deaf and Disabled Poets Write Back, which is edited by Sandra Allen, Kiarani Brocker, and Daniel Sluman. I reviewed this for the poetry review and I also recorded an audio of that review. If you would like to listen to that, I will link it in the description box down below. Another poetry collection is this one here. This is a proof copy, so the final version doesn't look like this, but it's called The Girl Who Forgets How to Walk by Kate Davis, which is about growing up as a young girl having polio. The poems in here are not my favourite poems ever, but I still think that it's worth reading and I do think that there are moments that I admired. A picture book is The Five of Us by Quentin Blake. This is about a group of five children who go in a bus with their teacher to have a picnic in the hills. They each have different abilities. Um, one of them has a stammer, one of them is in a wheelchair, one of them is very powerful, one of them has a heightened... Um, I don't know if it's sense of smell or if it's sight, um, but they all have different abilities and they all succeed in different ways um, and then they have to rescue their teacher. It's um, a fantastic book to help teach children about difference. If I may, I'm gonna recommend my own book, which is The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night. This is a collection of 12 stories, um, some of which are inspired by fairy tale, and many of the characters in here have bodily differences. One is in a wheelchair, one has ectrodactyly. Um, also, there are stories where magical realism is used to show physical difference as well. If you would like to listen to me reading one of the ones called Bright White Hearts, I'll leave a link to that audio recording in the description box down below. This is a book that I read pre-booktube and I'm always a little bit anxious talking about books that I read so long ago because I haven't revisited them and I wonder if I read them again if I would feel differently about them. So no, this is um, 
teenage me, young teenage me who read this book and enjoyed it. It's called In the Blood by Andrew Motion, who was Poet Laureate. So this is very poetically written and it's about him and his childhood. He was ill, he had quite a lot of leg surgery and spent a lot of time in bed um, when he was younger, which is what I remember from this book too. But as I've mentioned in a previous video when I talked about this book, I believe that there are quite a lot of discussions about fox hunting as well. So if that's something that, um, you don't want to read about then I think you should avoid this book but I have warm feelings remembering this book it's probably one that I should revisit at some point. Next we have two books by Kirsty Logan we have The Grace Keepers this was her debut novel it's about a girl called North who has a bear she grows up on a circus ship and also a woman called Cavendish who is a grace keeper so she puts people to rest at sea and Cavendish has syndactyly which is where you're born with your fingers joined together and then also we have The Gloaming which is also by her and the main character in this has a facial disfigurement she has a scar from an accident when she was younger and when Kirsty was writing this she asked me for advice on her writing representation of disfigurement which I very much appreciated um, and she was also asking me, about, asking me about it after The Gracekeepers came out as well because obviously I have some dactyly. Um, so yes, I would recommend both of these books. Next we have The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. I read this when I was much younger too and I remember feeling very panicked reading it because it's about anyone who has extra digits or less digits than they should, lots of air quotes. They are, they are, those people are banished from society and live on the outskirts of society. It's post-apocalyptic, dystopian, I think it's post-nuclear. Um, and yeah, I very much identified with this book and I'm pretty sure that it was the inspiration for Scott Westerfeld's Uglies series, um, which I don't have much to say about. I did read them, but they, they didn't, they didn't last with me at all and I found them quite repetitive. This one has stuck with me, so it is a book I would recommend and it is my favourite of John Wyndham's books. Something I also identified with was this book here, Kieran Wilwood Hargraves, The Island at the End of Everything. This is her second novel, it's historical fiction. It's about an island where people with leprosy were sent um, and the main character's mother has leprosy, many of the other adults have leprosy and the main character's best friend has a hand disfigurement. Um, so yes, I identified with that. The the research that was gone into this and the representation of physical differences in this book is just fantastic. It is so well balanced and it made me cry. I just thought it was wonderful. It was one of those books that I felt really, you know, reached through the pages and and not hugged me because that sounds really, I don't know, cliche, but I am um, I felt understood reading this book, which isn't always the case when you're reading books that deal with topics such as this. This is middle grade but I would recommend it for many different people. Next we have Poor Things by Alistair Gray. Um, I am uploading a video where I talk about this in depth next week. I know I've been promising that for ages. Um, I spoke about it in my annotations video um, but the week that I was going to upload the video about this book um, a member of my family died and then I found it very difficult to revisit this book because those two things just seem to be very much tied together. That video is definitely coming next week. Um, this is one of those books that's more um, metaphorical with regard to bodily difference. Um, it is inspired by Frankenstein. It is about a professor who claims that he has created a woman by taking the brain of her unborn child and putting it in her brain so that he can mould her to be the person that he wants to be. It's not magical realism, it's, it's kind of do you believe that this is true? I still find it very interesting for its discussion on body and also surgery as well. Um, so I highly recommend this, it's one of my favourite books ever, though it's not specifically about one kind of disfigurement. Beyond the Pale by Emily Urquhart is a wonderful non-fiction book. I have a quote on the front, I've put my name on it, I loved it that much. A non-fiction book about albinism around the world. Um, Emily's daughter was born with albinism and she wanted to research how people with albinism are treated in different countries and also folklore surrounding albinism as well. I recorded a podcast with Emily which I'll link in the description box along with this book. Um, a book that I read quite a long time ago, a few years ago, is A Story of Witchery by Jennifer Calkins. This is a very strange book published by Lafigue Press, who are a press that I really admire because they publish very obscure things that are wonderful to analyse. So this has black and white illustrations inside and then it's poetry 
kind of. It's a fairy tale about a girl who goes into another realm and lots of bodily difference is discussed and she has a cleft palate herself. It's quite Pan's labyrinthy. It wasn't something that I absolutely loved because I wasn't really sure what it was saying about physical difference. Um, but it is one that has stayed with me in a kind of perplexing way. Um, so if you like weird stuff, then uh, maybe take a look at this and the press itself because it publishes, as I said, really bizarre things. I have some non-fiction books on disfigurement and disability which I'm going to quickly whiz through. I'm not going to talk about them here because I haven't read them all in full yet. I've been dipping in and out of them for research but I'm going to mention them in case they're of interest to you and they'll be linked down below in case you want to go and find out more and once I have read them in full I, I will speak about them. So we have this which is The Cinema of Isolation, A History of Physical Disability in the Movies. Um, we have this which is Disability and the Media. The Minority Body, A Theory of Disability. The Other Within, The Genius of Deformity in Myth, Culture and Psyche. Um, and Embodying the Monster, Encounters with the Vulnerable Self. So if you want to go and find out more, you can check out the links that will be in the description. Two non-fiction books about disability and disfigurement that I have read cover to cover that I would recommend are these, which is Disability, Deformity and Disease in the Grimm's Fairy Tales, and also this, which is Spectacle of Deformity, which looks at the history of the freak show in Britain. Okay, so now we're moving on to books that I haven't read yet, so I can't really speak about them, but I want to mention them um, in case you want to check them out, and also in case you have read them, and you can let me know in the comments section what you think of them. So let's whiz through them. We have got Little Nothing by Marissa Silva. Um, this is about someone who is called Nothing, who I believe is born with dwarfism, um, and people marvel at her physical differences. I'm always a little bit wary of books like this, but I have heard some good things about it. Um, this one um, by the Lumberjack... by the Lumberjack Dove? No, it's called The Lumberjack's Dove uh, by Jenna Rose Nethercott. This is um, a collection of poetry um, and I'm a little bit wary about it because it's a lumberjack who cuts off his own hand and then he encounters a woman who's cut off all of her hair um, and it does look at mutilating your own body and I, I don't know if that is romanticised at all um, and I don't want to say that it is because I haven't read it yet but that's why I haven't actually got to it yet because I'm a, a little bit wary about it but I'm hopeful that it's going to be interesting and using magical realism in a way to discuss bodies um, in a way that I like, but I will come back to you on it once I have read it. This is a novel called Seeing Red by uh, Lina Moranier. This is translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell. It's highly inspired, I believe, by the author's life, and this is about losing your sight. Next, I have this review copy called Inseparable, the original Siamese twins and their rendezvous with American history. This is about Chang and Eng. Um, they were at one point part of P.T. Barnum's show. Um, and then we have this collection of essays called uh, Beautiful Flesh, a body of essays. I see what they did there authors talking about different body parts, um, differently abled bodies, um, and each essay focused on a specific part of the body, which I find really interesting. Um, one that's been sitting in my TBR for a while is Fire Girl by Tony Abbott. It says, from this moment on, life is never quite the same for Tom and his seventh grade classmates. Despite Jessica's shocking appearance and the fear she evokes in him and most of the class, um, Tom, I'm laughing because it makes me uncomfortable, uh, Tom slowly develops a tentative friendship with Jessica that changes his life. Fire Girl is a powerful book that shows readers that even the smallest of gestures can have a profound impact on someone's life. I picked this up because I'm always after books that have representation of disfigurement, but I haven't read it yet because I'm worried it's going to be like wonder only. I'm worried it might be a little bit um, worse than that by the language that's used on the back, um, fear, etc., of someone's appearance, um, and it focusing on someone who is able-bodied who is accepting of someone who isn't. But I haven't read it yet, so we shall see, and I will talk about it when I have read it. Next is a non-fiction book that I've read the beginning of, but haven't finished yet. It's called Archibald McKindo, The Royal Air Force and the Guinea Pig Club, The Reconstruction of Warriors. It's by A.R. Mayhew. This is about McKindo, who is a pirate, pi pirate? A pioneering surgeon, um, and he lo did lots of reconstruction surgery on pilots who'd been injured during the Second World War. 
and I gave a lecture at the East Grinstead Museum which commemorates all of the work that he has done um, on disfigurement and disability and I'm fascinated to find out more about all of the amazing things that he did. Next up we have this huge, huge book here that I've heard such good things about called The Grey House by Marian Petroskian and it's translated from the Russian by Yuri Mashistov and this is a book about a house um, the Grey House, I don't know if it's in the sky, like here, but all of the people who live in the house have physical disabilities and they're looked on um, from the outside by the outsiders. So I believe this is fantasy um, with all of the characters having physical differences and disabilities. So it does sound fascinating, but as I said, it's, it's huge and that does intimidate me slightly. One that isn't huge is this one here, which hopefully I'll get to soon. It's called The Alarming Palsy of James Orr. I think it's set all in one day and it's about a character who has Bell's palsy. Um, then we have this, which is an anthology called Poetry in Medicine, which I'm sure we'll touch on, disability and disfigurement. Next we have a novel that I'm not sure about. I've started it before and I wasn't convinced, so I put it down, but I may give it another shot because it may have been, you know, the time and place that I read it. It's called The Clocks in the House All Tell Different Times by Zan Brooks. It's set just after the First World War in 1923. It's about a young girl called Lucy and she goes to the woods where she visits some soldiers from the First World War who have disfigurements. They're called the Funny Men and she's named them after characters from The Wizard of Oz. Um, so yes, I wasn't sure about this one. Have you read it? What did you think about it? Um, I also have a couple of um, uh, poetry collections here, one of which is an anthology. This is called Beauty is a Verb. Um, and this is like the US version of Stairs and Whispers, which was the UK anthology of poetry about disfigurement and disability that I showed you before. So that's what this is as well. Um, and then there's this here called Patient by Bettina Judd, which is a collection of poems that looks at disability. And finally, I have this novel here called Wolf in White Van by John Darnielle, which is about a man called uh, Sean Phillips. It says, a terrible event leaves Sean Phillips disfigured when he's only 17. He then goes on to create a video game for people to play and he starts questioning reality and um, cyberspace. So those are the books that are on my TBR. There may be others on my shelves that I have either forgotten to pull off my shelves or perhaps touch on topics like this but I'm just not aware of those because I haven't read them yet. Um, as I said all of the books that I've mentioned are going to be linked in the description box down below. There were quite a few that I got through here. I hope that this video was helpful. Have you read any of these books, especially the ones that I haven't got to yet? Have you read any of them? What did you think? As I said, I have made other videos talking about um, more generally the representation of disfigurement and disability. If you would like to go and check those out, that would be fantastic. If you're new, please do subscribe. That would be wonderful as well. I hope that you're having a great week and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.